So, Volume 98 of One Piece has just released in Japan, and with it comes another SPS, the Question Corner, where Oda answers questions from fans, revealing new cool tidbits about the series, as well as a lot of other pointless joke questions. But anyways, let's check out this new SPS together. This SPS was fully translated by me. I directly translated every single question from Japanese for your enjoyment, and if you want to read the full translations in their original format, you can find them on my website, thelibrarohara.com, included in a link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. So, the first actually somewhat relevant question is question 3, where a fan asks, Oda sensei, hello, according to my grandma, Yamada's birthday is on November 3rd. Is that so? Oda replies, well then, guess it is November 3rd. So this is a bit of a joke question, but the contents of the question are canon at this point, so yeah, uh, Yamada's birthday is now on November 3rd, uh, which he happens to share with Kami, so that's pretty cool. The next question, a fan asks Oda to draw Law's face when he eats umeboshi. Umeboshi are Japanese sour plums, which, you know, obviously are very very sour and they usually cause your face to pucker, so Oda provided us with uh, Law with puckering lips, as well as a uh, simplified version for those who want to draw it at home. The next question is a bit more interesting, where a fan asks, I'm really, really curious to see how Kid and Killer's first love, Sirton Dorianaika, looks like. I wonder, what kind of face does she have? I bet she's a real cutie. So, for those that don't know, uh, Sirton Dorianaika was a character who was introduced in the volume 87 SBS when a fan asked why Kid and Killer both hated Koryodon, as explained in an older SBS. And, as Oda explained, it's because they both had a crush on this girl called Sirton Dorianaika, but one day, when the three of them were eating Koryodon and she stained her clothes, the two of them laughed at her, causing her to beat them up and dump them, which is why now that is a bitter memory and they hate Koryodon. The funny thing is about this whole story that this was mentioned way, way before the whole, you know, killer's laugh and Kamazo thing was revealed, so this was Oda already sneakily alluding at killer's creepy fa 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 laugh long before its reveal. Sirton Doryanaika, by the way, can be translated as uh, stain my shirt with broth uh, when spoken in a Kansai dialect, as we see in this image where she literally just says Sirton Doryanaika, which means I stain my shirt with broth. The next question is Odachi. In chapter 977, in the scene after Nami hugs Jinbei, I spotted Sanji binding onto handkerchief while going like Ugh! out of jealousy. From pen name, a pure hearted middle school student who wrote about wanting to meet Odachi at Tanabata. And Oda replies, Wow, I'm amazed. Well done on spotting that. Since it was cut off by the page format, you might have to use your imagination a little. This Sanji is very well hidden. Good job. So yeah, if you go back to chapter 977, you can actually spot this Sanji in this corner, uh, but he is cut off by the page, so he's very hard to see, and Oda here provides us with a proper image where we can actually see how it looks like. The next question is... Um, well, basically, Oda just transcribed the actual handwriting from the original question, <laughs> so it says, uh, If Luffy's Gear 4 is a thing, then will Gear 5 be a thing too? And Oda replies, uh, very well, seeing the passion in your handwriting, I feel obligated to include this question just as I received it. So, will 5 be a thing? Right now, the enemy we have to defeat is the man said to essentially be the world's strongest. Because of that, the world is in the age of transitioning from 4G to 5G. G means gear, right? So, Oda is obviously joking here again, uh, but he is actually somewhat teasing the possibility of Gear 5th coming in the future. Specifically, he mentions the battle against Kaido, so he could be implying that Gear 5th could be happening. Uh, again, maybe he is just joking and it doesn't mean anything, but this uh, could potentially hint that we could see it in the future or not. Uh, Oda is purposefully being vague. The next question is about Ulti, with a fan asking, In chapter 978, when Ulti-chan starts ending her sentences with Arinsu, page 1 says, Is this another one of your weird trends? But then, what were her speaking trends before this one like? So, uh, this is a thing that is a bit lost in translation, but in the Japanese version, Ulti ends her sentences with Arinsu which is a form of arimas, which is a Japanese way to end sentences, 
uh, that was used by like old courtesans in you know old ancient Japan. Uh, some translations adapt this by having her uh, speak in a very fancy way. Uh, but basically, she's just kind of like speaking in a weird, like, oh, super fancy, elegant way that doesn't really fit her character and really just comes off as cringy. And uh, since, uh, you know, page one said that, like, oh, God, this is another one of your weird, you know, speech quirks, the fan asks, what previous speech quirks were there before this? And Oda mentions that, right, um, uh, she used to add uh, Gonsu, which in this case is a weird variation of uh, Gozaru, which is another old form to end sentences. A bit before her debut, she went like, Pepe, oh me, poor little thing, Gonsu. So uh, obviously here, instead of saying, you poor little thing, she says, me poor little thing, which doesn't really mean anything because it's not a sentence you would use uh, but she's basically just pitying herself so that uh, page one gives her affection uh, and again he, she adds this uh, gonsu at the end which just uh, comes off as incredibly cringy and weird and honestly sounds just exactly as weird in Japanese as it does in English. Now, the next question is actually by Oda, saying that he lost uh, one of the postcards he received. But he says, basically, It was from a fellow with the pen name E Young Kun, who asked me to take a look at his YouTube channel. It seems he does videos where he crafts One Piece figures. I thought I recognized one of the figures, and I realized it was because he previously submitted to the Usopp Pirates Gallery. It's pretty fun to think some readers have become YouTubers. <laughs> so, please go give E Young a look. Good luck with the channel! So yeah, I'll include a link to the description if you want to check it out. It's a guy who makes uh, completely custom-made uh, One Piece figures. It's really cool stuff, so if you want to give it a look, uh, go check the description. So let's pretend that previous question did not happen, and let's move on to question number 12. Where a fan asks about how the Marines are graded. Uh, this is information we've known for a very long time, so there's really, really nothing new here. Uh, if you want to, you know, see this information, you can easily find it on my page, but it's mostly redundant stuff. Uh, but there are a couple of cool things about this that Oda reveals. That, uh, first of all, Django and Full Body have been promoted from Seaman Recruit to Lieutenant Commander. And that uh, T-Bone has been promoted from uh, Captain to Rear Admiral, so that's pretty cool. Next question. All of the officers of the Kaido Pirates are named after card games, right? Another replies, yep, indeed. The three all-stars are pretty obvious, but all of the flying six, the numbers, and the headliners, only excluding Drake, Apu, and Hawkins, are all named after card games, as well as the King, Queen, Jack, and 1 to 10 cards. If I were to list them all, I'd be filling this entire page. And I imagine some of you might go, I've never heard of this one before in regards to many of these games, but there are many ways to play with cards all over the world. By the way, in Dressrosa, Doflamingo being called a Joker is a remnant of an initial idea where Doflamingo was going to fight as a powerful companion of Kaido in the Wano Country. He's quite the tricky opponent, so I'm glad we got rid of him in Dressrosa. So, this is a really interesting tidbit. Now, the whole car thing is something we've known for a very long time, but it is very interesting that Oda mentions that, you know, the reason why the filming was called Joker, and probably why, you know, Pika, Trebol, Diamante, and Corazon were all named after card suits, uh, was because... Doflamingo was meant to be an opponent in the Wano country. He was meant to be like a major enemy, maybe in the place of king or something. It's unclear if Oda is referring to, you know, Doflamingo being like a direct subordinate of the Beast Pirates or he was just gonna be an ally of Kaido. Uh, but it's still a very interesting concept because it seems to imply that, you know, maybe Dressrosa wouldn't have happened or maybe Dressrosa was just meant to be a short arc, but then, you know, Kaido maybe would have teamed up with Doflamingo and Doflamingo would have joined him in the Wano country. Uh, we don't know for sure since it is a very, uh, it is a bit vague, uh, but it is very interesting to see that originally, you know, Doflamingo was not considered to, you know, be like the big opponent of Dressrosa and that the Dressrosa arc might have been way shorter than it ever ended up being. Anyway, so let's ignore that question as well. The next question goes, Oda Sensei, I have a question. Those who eat smiles grow horns, right? Then why do pleasures have one horn and gift her two horns? And then Oda says, that's just fashion. It's not enforced, but pleasures are allowed to sport one horn, while gifters and above are allowed two, or so the rule goes. 
So this is something that a lot of people noticed that all of the gifters and all of the pleasures and a lot of members of Kindest Crew had horns, uh, but a lot of people just kind of wondered, you know, like, is this an effect of the Smile Fruits, you know, because it was kind of mentioned like, oh, you know, s you know, the gifters, the Smile users have two horns on their heads, uh, but Oda here confirms that it's just fashion, it's just something they do, you know, it's just a part of the crew, it's just part of the branding, I guess, uh, so it's not like an actual, like, side effect of the fruit or anything, uh, but it doesn't specify if, like, the Flying Six and most importantly, you know, like Jack and Kaido and Yamato are also, you know, like just fashion horns. Uh, it could be for the Flying Six, maybe, but I'm not so sure, like, about like Yamato and Kaido. We know that Jack is a fishman that was confirmed in a Viver card, so those could be just simply, you know, horns uh, of a fish. You know, it could just be part of his genes, but. Kaido and Yamato, you know, are they part of a horned race? What about someone like Black Maria, who the horns do seem to be like part of her skin? Uh, so I'm curious about that, and I do hope that Oda does clarify that in the future. But anyways, the next question is a pretty cool one, where a fan asks to draw Sanji at ages 40 and 60 in the future. Oda has done this for many characters in previous SPSs, where he draws them at age 40, age 60, and then in like a parallel bad timeline where things went wrong, also at ages 40 and 60. And here it's really cool because, you know, first we have the good timeline where Sanji at age 40 goes, whether it's woman or food, I ain't picky. And the really cool thing is like, obviously you can tell the inspirations about Zeph and Judge in the other pictures, but in this one you might notice Sanji's hair is very similar to that of his mom, so that's actually a very cool detail that might be easy to miss. But then at age 60, you know, he looks like Zeph and he says, I'm gonna go fish in the old blue. So it's indicating that he has found the old blue, supposedly opened a restaurant, and he's like, hey, you know, just give me a moment, I'm gonna go fish in the old blue, and then I'm gonna be back. Then instead, in the <laughs> in the bad timeline, we got this like fat, uh, ugly Sanji with both eyes covered, who says, as long as it fills the belly, all food's the same. And then at age 60, we have Sanji basically looking like Judge, saying, drain the poison into the sea, which, you know, shows a complete disregard for sea wildlife, which goes very against uh, Sanji's character, but that makes sense, because this is kind of like the, the bad future. Uh, but it's very interesting that Sanji basically becomes Judge, and it's not just the, like, he kind of looks like him, it's like, no, he looks identical to him. And the reason why is because unlike all the other Vinsmokes, Sanji is the one who is closest to Judge. And the reason why Judge hated him all this time is because Sanji reminded Judge of himself. He reminded him of how weak he is and, you know, his obsession with trying to create the perfect superhuman was, in a sense, a projection of his own weakness. And once again, like this, uh, SBS just basically confirms that, yeah, Sanji is like Judge, but... You know, depending on the timeline, he would end in a different point or another. And also as a cool detail, like uh, on the mask, there's like an S in top, which obviously stands for Sanji. The next question is also very interesting. A fan asks, In chapter 962, Daimyeon vassals, a young Izo can be seen wielding a katana, while Kiku wields a gun. But currently, it's the complete opposite. Is there any reasoning behind this? Another replies, The gun Kiku was holding was just her brother's gun. Nothing more to it. The two of them had a debauched father and were forced by deprived adults to entertain them ever since they were small. But even if they were poor, they were very close to each other. One of the tricks they used to entertain was sharpshooting, which Izo had 10 out of 10 flawless precision in. However, he was never very confident with the sword. As time went by, he ended up on Whitebeard's ship, and when he showed off his shooting, Flowerblade's Vista told him, you should use that speciality of yours to protect others. What good is a samurai obsessively sticking to a sword if he cannot protect their lord with it? Being a samurai is a way of life, after all. So, Izo abandoned the sword and picked up the gun. So this is a very cool tidbit about Izo's past, how he came to use a gun as a weapon compared to all the other scabbards, which mainly just use swords, as well as a bit of a look into how his early childhood with Kiku was. And moving on to the final page, we have a very cool question where a fan asks Oda if Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, and Frankie were to become ability users, then what kind of fruit do you think they would have eaten? And Oda says, uh, for Zoro, the Uonomi, the fish fish fruit, mythical type, bottle, seiryu. Now, this is big, because this is actually revealing the name of Kaida's fruit. We had known in chapter 999 that the fruit was the fish fish fruit, the Uonomi, but we didn't know what the actual model was, which turned out to be here, the model seiryu. 
the Seiryu is a dragon god from Eastern mythology, the name literally just translates to Azure Dragon, which is why Kaido has this color scheme, and is considered a protecting deity in some places like the ancient capital of Kyoto, which lines up with what was said about Kaido being considered a protecting deity for Wano. I've already explained in the past why Kaido is a fish feed fruit user and not a dragon dragon fruit user, because dragon in Japanese uh, within this context actually refers to soar as in dinosaur, and that is already used for the soar soar line of devil fruits. Uh, so I would simply want to distinguish that, but you know, I won't repeat myself, I've already talked about that, I've also included it in, in the translation note on my site in case you want to check that out, but uh, regardless, it's nice that we finally got the full official name for Kaida's fruit, and showing that in the end, yeah, it's basically just a dragon devil fruit with extra steps. Anyways, Ode explains his choice by saying, I'd want the sword to turn into a dragon rather than Zoro, I think that would be insanely cool, which I agree. Then for Nami, he simply says the Goro Goro no Mi, the Rumble Rumble Fruit, which is Daniel's Devil Fruit, which, I mean, of course, Nami manipulates lightning, so if she was able to fully, perfectly control lightning, uh, as Oda puts it, that would make her a true weather lady, pun intended, to the point that no one would be able to stop her anymore, except from Luffy, obviously. Usopp, a very interesting one, Oda suggests he would have the Poke Poke no Mi, or the Pocket Pocket Fruit. Now, this is interesting because this is another fruit which was not named before, and it is the fruit of Blamenko, the commander of the 6th Division of the Whitebeard Pirates. We saw this fruit in action before, we saw it during the Marine Corps War, where he was able to kind of like pull any object from like his pockets, like he was able to pull a giant hammer from like his cheek, even though it was like a very small pocket, and Oda confirms that, you know, as we expected, it is called the Poke Poke no Mi, and he comments that, you know, it is the perfect pocket for someone like Usopp, who always has something up his sleeve. Then for Sanji, it would be the Sui Sui no Mi, or the Sui same fruit, it allows one to slip through walls or swim in the ground, and if given to Sanji, it become quite the um, nasty ability, and I think Oda here is uh, probably suggesting the same thing you're thinking, and that uh, Sanji wouldn't exactly be using this fruit for uh, noble reasons. And finally, for Frankie, he chooses the Buki Buki no Mi, Arms Arms Fruit, Baby Five's Weapons Fruit, and as Oda puts it, it is just a perfect pick for Frankie. And our final, like, serious question is uh, the vessel who taste tasted Mamonosuke's food in Chapter 971, and the vessel who reported Odin's foul deeds to Sukiyaki in Chapter 960 are the same person, right? It seems he has been supporting the Kosuke family for generations. And Oda replies with, indeed, that's exactly the case. His name is Banzaburo. He's a samurai that was picked by Sukiyaki in his youth and who is immensely grateful for that. So yeah, I was also curious about who this guy is. We see him a bunch of times across Odin's flashback and Oda reveals that his name is Banzaburo. Ban in Banzaburo can uh, refer to a guard, to, you know, a lookout, which would make sense because he is a guard in the Kosuke family's palace and uh, Zaburo is a common suffix that just means third son. So yeah, it's pretty cool that we finally got his name. And the final question is not really a serious one, but let's read it anyways. A fan asks, I want to ask you a question. Live or life? Which is a joke because it's the opposite of the question that Big Mom usually asks. Stay or life? Anoda says, that's scary. Um, I don't want to give up lifespan. I pick leave. I'm leaving. All right, that's all for the SBS. Until next time. <laughs> And that's all for me as well. <laughs> Did you find any of this information in the SBS interesting? Or were you annoyed by these stupid joke questions once again? Let me know and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.